Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, it's time to provide our monthly update on the GPU market to see what the current trends are for pricing. The situation of terrible availability and high prices, of course, continues, but let's hope we have some good news to share on where the market is headed and what has happened in the past month. One change for this video compared to our previous iteration in May is that we will no longer be covering the CPU market. That's because, well, basically the CPU market is normal at the moment. You can get the vast majority of processors at the MSRP in most regions. There are a few exceptions, such as the Ryzen 9 5900X in the United States, uh, but some products are even now being sold slightly below the MSRP, like the 5800X. And of course, Intel's processors remain great value, especially in the 10th generation, so there isn't much point dedicating a chunk of time to talk about CPUs anymore. What isn't normal right now is the GPU market, which is of no surprise to anyone, but before that, a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video sponsor is Gigabyte and their brand new range of Intel 11th generation hardware. Gigabyte offers an excellent range of Intel Z590 desktop motherboards equipped with robust VRM designs capable of extracting the most from Intel's latest Core i9 processors. Then for mobile users, the Aero 15 is a beast, packing a 4K OLED display with HDMI 2.1 and can be configured with either an 11th gen Core i7 or Core i9 processor. So, for more information, please check the link in the video description. So the GPU market. At many retailers, the situation is improving to some degree. It's easier to buy GPUs than in prior months, especially outside the United States. Here at PC Case Gear, you can buy any current generation GPU right now if you want to, with the exception of the RTX 3060 Ti. And not in bundles or anything, just standalone GPUs. The catch is that pricing is very high. You are faced with AIB MSRPs 2.5 times higher than the Nvidia MSRP for something like an RTX 3070, and even relatively affordable cards like the Radeon RX 6700 XT are selling for $400 above MSRP. We're hearing similar stories from a lot of our Patreon and Floatplane supporters, especially those in Europe. At Case King in Germany, just as one example, yeah, you can buy an RTX 3070 right now, it'll just set you back over 1100 euros when the Nvidia MSRP has been set at, I believe, 520 euros. Last month, when cryptocurrencies were booming, most of these products were out of stock. And as we've talked about, one of the first steps to seeing better GPU pricing is to have cards actually available at all. Not that anyone will be rushing out to buy a card with this sort of pricing. There hasn't been any change to the general reasons we have heard for high pricing, including shortages of raw components, limited wafer production at fabs, component shortages, high logistics costs, especially for international shipping, and so on. However, it seems that AIBs have cooled off a bit on increasing their asking price for custom models. For the last few months, basically any resupply of GPUs would see prices raised slightly to more closely align with the scalper market, but now that GPUs are sitting on shelves at some retailers, that process has thankfully slowed down a bit. So before we do a deep dive analysis on current scalper market prices, why are GPUs now more available than in previous months? Well, aside from continued production at record rates, which is slowly satisfying the insane demand for gaming GPUs, there has been a shakeup in the crypto market. So let's talk about all of that. First up, the crypto market itself has fallen. When we last updated you in May, Ethereum was sitting at around 3,500 US dollars, down from a peak of 4,000 US just a few days prior. Since then, Ethereum has fallen to around $2,300 over the course of a month, a 34% drop, with similar declines in other popular coins. But that's not the only contributing factor to the profitability of mining. As we talked about last month, gas prices and difficulty of mining are also very important. Gas prices have dropped substantially since May, as fewer transactions are taking place on the Ethereum network due to lower prices and lower interest in general. As tracked by Etherscan, gas prices are somewhere between half and a third of what they were a month ago, so the reward for processing transactions has dropped a lot. However, Ethereum difficulty has also declined in the past month, from a peak that coincided with the highest value for the coin. Difficulty has dropped by around 11% over the last 30 days, which has put difficulty around where we were in late April. This is both a good and bad thing. It's good in the sense that lower difficulty means less people mining, so the popularity of mining is decreasing, reducing the potential of new cards being sold to miners. But it's also bad though, as a lower difficulty increases block rewards and increases mining profitability, so you wouldn't want the difficulty to get too low, otherwise mining would start being super profitable again. 
So when looking at the mining market overall for the most popular coin for GPU-based mining, the value of Ethereum is down 34%, gas prices are more than halved, and difficulty is also down 10%. Everything combined has seen profitability of mining on a GPU like the RTX 3090, as measured at NiceHash, roughly halved since this time last month, from around 12 to 14 US dollars per day to around 7 US dollars per day right now, not including cost of power. While a lot of this decline in profitability occurred several weeks ago and has held steady since, this reduction has weakened the demand for graphics cards for mining, especially at certain high prices. It greatly extends the time to profitability from purchasing a GPU for mining, and with a lot of uncertainty around the future of mining in networks like Ethereum, miners appear more hesitant to buy up cards. In fact, during the research stage for this video, I spotted several full mining rigs for sale on eBay, which I didn't see as much of a few months ago. No flood of used GPUs yet, but it is a better situation. Tracking current generation GPU prices on eBay in the third week of each month for new products and completed sales shows good news across the board. GPU prices are down quite a bit since the terrible situation we faced in May, basically the worst month for GPU pricing ever. Cards like the RTX 3080 and RTX 3070 have seen a near 25% reduction in scalper pricing, while the RTX 3060 has fallen 15%, and AMD's RX 6800 and 6700 series cards have dropped between 14 and 20%. The average of these declines in pricing is 18%, which doesn't match the decline in profitability, but pricing increases last month didn't reflect the full extent of profitability gains either. The scalper market moves more slowly in response to trends, but it's clear that scalpers are not able to get away with as high prices this month as they were able to last month. However, GPUs are still ridiculously overpriced in general. Some GPUs have fallen below double their MSRP for the first time in ages, like the RTX 3090 and RX 6700 XT, but the majority of cards still sit between 2x and 3x over their MSRP, the average being 2.3 times. That's down from a price inflation of 2.9 times last month. The better news here is that GPU prices are the lowest they have been in the time that we've been tracking GPU prices this way. Prices for the majority of GPUs are lower than they were in the middle of March when Ethereum was in the $1800 US dollar range. And running the numbers for a few cards, it seems that pricing is roughly where it was at in the end of January, early February period. So the lowest prices for about four months is a good sign. Again, GPU prices aren't good overall, but better than they were and trending in the right direction for now. If you desperately want a current generation GPU and are willing to pay scalper prices, the Radeon RX 6700 XT remains the best value graphics card on the market going on cost per frame. That's because AMD's RDNA 2 GPUs are worse than Nvidia's Ampere GPUs for mining, especially when Ampere isn't limited through their LHR feature. The 6700 XT is over 30% better value than the RTX 3070, while GPUs like the RTX 3090 and 3080 Ti remain the worst value. We can also gain some insight into why prices are the way they are right now when we look at mining profitability. At current profitability rates as seen on the website what to mine with power at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, generally it will take someone buying a new GPU at least 10 months to reach profitability, a lot longer than in previous months. It's also interesting to look at how long it will take someone buying a GPU on the scalper market to pay back the inflated price they paid through mining. In other words, how long it takes to pay the difference between the average eBay price and the card's MSRP. That's sitting at around 200 days on average, or six and a half months, and requires profitability to remain exactly the same as now for that entire period. With this data in hand, you can see why some miners are choosing to exit the business and why mining difficulty has dropped in the past month. It's a delicate balancing act between profitability, time to profit, and the value of the graphics cards on the used market now and in the future. If profitability and resale value continue to drop and the time to profitability increases, mining becomes a riskier investment and less people will want to get involved. I also wanted to spend some time looking at the used market and set up the process of tracking used prices over the coming months for older generation cards. Have prices on the used market also dropped in line with new current generation GPUs? Well, you bet they have. First up we have the GeForce RTX 20 series. Prices have dropped 14% on average for used models of these cards, and while most models are still sold for above their initial launch MSRP, that gap is shrinking. 
Unfortunately, GPUs like the RTX 2060 remain woefully overpriced due to a lack of newer cards in that performance tier. So while you only have to spend about $100 over the launch price on an RTX 2080, you have to spend $200 over launch price to get a 2060. There is an interesting trend to spot with the GeForce GTX 16 series, and that is the pricing of entry-level GPUs. The GTX 1650 and, to a lesser extent, the 1650 Super have barely fallen in price at all, while cards around them are dropping by more significant numbers. That's because these cards are generally unsuitable for mining with their 4GB VRAM buffers and low memory bandwidth, so pricing is less linked to mining profitability and more to the pricing of other GPUs. With that said, the GTX 1650 is still a horrible deal right now either way. For NVIDIA's Pascal GPUs, price drops are a little higher than with Turing but follow a similar trend. Higher end GPUs like the GTX 1080 Ti have fallen in price by a larger amount than a card like the GTX 1060 6 or 3 gigabyte models. In fact, everything from the GTX 1070 and above is now roughly in line with their launch MSRPs. Not a great situation, but better than other product lines, while the 1060 remains inflated again due to the reasons we've been talking about. If you are lucky enough to purchase one of AMD's Radeon RX 5000 series GPUs, you basically hit the jackpot in the current used market. That's because the 5000 series are very good at mining. The 5700 XT, for example, has profitability more in line with the RTX 2080 and RTX 3070 than the RTX 2070, which is the closest competitor for gaming. So while the RTX 2070 was sold for about $840 on the used market last month, 5700 XTs were fetching nearly $1,200 and even today are still more than double their launch MSRP. As pricing here is heavily linked to mining profitability, prices have fallen by a greater than average margin. It also puts current 5700 XT owners in a bit of a strange though lucrative position. If you're not at all interested in mining, the 5700 XT is actually better at mining than the RX 6700 XT, but around 23% slower at 1440p gaming. With used 5700 XTs going for around $900, and new 6700 XTs going for about $900 as well, 5700 XT owners have the chance to take advantage of the used market and get a faster gaming GPU for basically nothing. The inverse, of course, is that 5700 XTs are terrible value buys if you're just interested in gaming. Older generation Radeon GPUs face a similar predicament as RDNA 1 in that pricing remains very inflated relative to launch pricing as both Vega and Polaris GPUs are excellent at mining, provided you get one with an 8GB VRAM buffer in the case of the RX 580 and RX 570. This makes the GTX 1060 a lot better value than the RX 580 for those after a GPU in the $300 range, as Steve mentioned in his latest video. So what are the main takeaways from this analysis? Well, GPU prices, whether that's current generation GPUs or older GPUs on the used market, are improving, slowly. We don't have any clear indication of when GPU pricing will return to normal, and who knows, maybe next month we come back and GPU prices have increased, but at least for now, the current trends in the market are a positive sign for gamers who have been waiting for a long time to get a new graphics card in their hands. Despite a glimmer of positivity, I wouldn't recommend anyone actually pay current scalper prices or prices for GPUs at retail, which are more available than in previous months, just at stupidly high prices. With most cards still priced at least double their MSRPs, a lot of products are still straight up bad value, either compared to other products currently available or in previous years. If you've kept patient for this long, hopefully you can ride it out for a bit longer. However, it is worth looking across the market to see if there are any anomalies you can take advantage of. The pathway to upgrade a 5700 XT into a 6700 XT is particularly interesting given the discrepancy between those cards' gaming and mining performance, which may only last while mining is still somewhat profitable. Where to from here? Well, we will continue to track GPU pricing and see how things evolve. What we're seeing at the moment isn't too dissimilar to the previous mining boom, so we'll just keep an eye on it all and let you know. Anyway, that's it for this month's GPU pricing analysis video. Hopefully there's a few more smiles on people's faces than in the previous video, where basically we just talked about how prices has increased a fair bit and everything was all a bit doom and gloom, but it is a bit better for the month of June. So that's fingers crossed, hope that pricing continues to go down this trend for the next couple of months. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel and the testing that we do, you can consider subscribing to our Floatplane and Patreon pages. Links to those are in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.